What's up guys? It's Ryantium here, and today we are back in Skyrim. And that's right, you guys, and no snap is gonna be an awesome freaking day. So guys, welcome back, and happy Thursday. So today, today we have a very different mod we're taking a look at. It's not necessarily a weapon mod, nor is it an armor mod, but instead, it's a mod going by the name of Tonal Architects. And it's actually a kind of magical mod based around the Dwemer. And I'm pretty excited to take a look at it. I already kind of did a preview of it, and it's got a lot to offer. But let's go ahead and break down exactly what this Tonal Architects mod does. Well, what it does is it adds a suite of Dwemer-themed magic uh, to Skyrim. Now, I went ahead and made myself level 100 in every single type of magic that we've got. Alteration, Restoration, Destruction, Conjuration, Illusion. However, I don't believe there's any Restoration spells within here, or within the mod. I just did it just in case. So there are indeed novice level spells that can actually be um, forged because you don't actually learn them the same way you do before. You actually have to forge them and then learn them, which is a really interesting thing. But it, uh, the level requirements, they tend to be 25, 50, 75, and then 100. And then there are three other spells that are locked behind a quest, but I couldn't for the life of me actually finish the quest because it wouldn't actually bring up where um, I was supposed to find the other two places, nor did it, when I went to those places, uh, did it actually show me where the, uh, the knowledge was at. So, if you know anything about the last three master spells, definitely put it down there in the comment section, and you might just assist someone here in the future. But enough talking about the mod, let's go ahead and break down exactly what is inside of here, and you'll want to come to the anvil. So when you come to the anvil, you'll want to find yourself either in the dwarven section, or you'll want to find yourself in the miscellaneous section. Now, the reason I said the Dwarven section is because a lot of these, in fact, every single one of the spell books, requires something known as the Dwemer Writing Tools. Now, the Dwemer Writing Tools requires a Dwemer Actuator, a Clamp, a Total Ring, a Shaft, and a Dwemer Socket, all of which can be crafted out of the Dwarven Metal Ingots. And you're going to need quite a few of these Dwemer writing tools in order to create all of the spells that you want. Not to mention, some of the spells actually use Dwarven scrap. So, you know, the really, you know, the, the garbage that you find around all the Dwemer ruins, all of the Dwemer scrap, the metal ingots, and everything like that, you may need some of those inside of your inventory to actually use some of these spells. So, for instance, we've got here the Etheric Warp. Enchant your power attacks for 60 seconds to do 10 magic damage and pull foes towards the nearest mine or bomb. Then we have ourselves the Arc Mine. It's a mine that casts lightning arcs at random targets for 15 shock damage to health and magicka, and yes, that does mean you as well. Compression Blast releases steam around the caster for 40 fire damage, but also any, autom uh, any automatons gain 100% speed for 10 seconds, so you can have some very fast freaking boys. Then we have the Crank Mine, the mine that releases Pressure Blast to reduce the armor of nearby targets by 25 points, and this effect does indeed stack. You can create a Dwarven Sphere, which is pretty self-explanatory, a Dwarven Spider, and then a Dwarven Thresher. I've never seen a Dwarven Thresher before, uh, but I'm just curious as to like where in the lore that fits, but we'll take a look at that here very soon. Then we have the Grounding Mine, which casts an etheric beam that uh, drains 80 points of magicka and stamina. Pretty nice. Manufacture allows you to spend scrap to equip a chosen dwarven staff for 10 minutes. Using more scrap increases its power. Then we have the Piston Mine, a mine that ejects incendiary projectiles upwards for 100 fire damage. Targets on fire take extra damage. Think of it as a dwarven bouncing betty. Research Power Stroke. Enchant your power attacks for 60 seconds to do 50 magic damage and launch targets with a pneumatic blast. And finally, we have Scald. A brief steam release for 10 fire damage per second. Automatons gain another 100% speed for 10 seconds. So these are all of the different researches that we've got right here. And they all require differing amounts of the Dwemer writing tools. So let's go ahead and warp to the load or warp to the save where I've actually gotten every single one of these spells. And let's take a look at each of them. So we're just going to be here in the Shellblad uh, Castle Forge to go ahead and test out some of these these different attacks and everything like that. So let's start off pretty easily with the Etheric Warp. Enchant your power attacks for 60 seconds to do 10 magic damage and pull foes to the nearest mine or bomb. 
This one is a bit strange, but I imagine it does require a weapon out. Yes. And no device detected in range. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So in order for that one to work, we're going to need to put down a mine first. So if we go ahead and say, I don't know, let's put an arc mine right there. We're not going to want to step inside of that big red circle. But what we are going to now do is go ahead and come down here. Go ahead and equip that. And that should... Should have pushed her over there. Nothing's the matter with me, Shellblad Mage. Okay, so that one looks like it doesn't work. Oh wait, no, it's power attacks. This regard. There we go! Okay, now that's really cool. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's actually really, really cool. So I was I was doing the regular attack, and I should have been doing the power attack. And uh, as we can see, that arc mine is just devastatingly powerful. Did that guard just die? Yes, she did. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. So the mines are indeed infinite, and uh, it's important to put them down in a place where, well, you know, there might only be one person there that you need to kill, or, you know, at least for like a dragon fight or a boss fight or something like that, because uh, that sound is going to be, like, existing forever of them shocking the crap out of those things. So that's a really cool thing to have. So we've seen the arc mine, we've seen the etheric warp, but now let's take a look at some of the other ones. So we have what's known as the compression blast and the crank mine. The compression blast releases steam around the caster for 40 damage. Go ahead and do that. You can basically become a Dwarven Centurion. <laughs> and you can become a very steamy boy. And it's honestly just kind of cool watching all of the steam come out and everything like that. But then we've also got another type of mine. And let's just go ahead and throw this back there. So this is the compression mine. And it does yet another thing with steam. So anytime someone walks into this red force field, it shoots out more steam. And as we saw in the description, uh, let's see, the crank mine uh, lowers the armor of nearby targets by 25 points, which is perfect for a lot of those heavily armored uh, targets. Then we have the conjuration spells that pretty much everyone knows about, but these ones allow you to not only conjure the dwarven sphere, the dwarven spider, or the dwarven thresher, but it has an icon right there that says energize. So you need a specific weapon in order to uh, in order to energize your automatons that you create. And the only way to do that is to use the spell known as Manufacture. So when you cast Manufacture, it pulls up your option right here. This is where you would find all of your Dwarven junk. Now I went ahead and duplicated a bunch of the Dwemer writing tools, but you don't necessarily need this many. I'm going to go ahead and give it as many as I can, and then I'm going to go ahead and click B to exit out of there. So right here, if we want to go ahead and, uh, I don't know, let's grab ourselves, uh, let's grab ourselves Pure Fire. This will now give us a very, very heavy duty staff. And uh, once you hold it and cast, it drops a nuke. So that's totally fine. <laughs> it's like a freaking fat man, I love it. But it does take a bit to charge it up. And now it's ready. Yeah, it's it's a literal Skyrim fat man, and that is that I'm fine with. But we can go ahead and energize this bad boy by expending five to hundred weapon charge, upgrading the automaton to thirty one damage and three hundred sixty health. But now we can't do that anymore. So you can see that it's kind of become electrified and everything like that. And then to get rid of the staff, you just sheath your weapon. Although no, it looks like it. Oh, well, now that's interesting. Can I keep this staff? Is this an actual thing? Oh, it is. Now that's kind of cool. Wait, how much? Dealing 237 damage per second? Holy crap! Yeah, so you can see down there in the bottom right-hand corner, it has the, uh, the charge. <laughs> that never gets old. <laughs> but that's just one of the things that you can do with the, uh, the manufacture, um, spell. So we can have the shock arc staff, and this one does exactly that, and it shocks things. And this one you can see inside of the weapons, 59 points of shock damage to health and magicka at close range. And honestly, this is just a really cool thing to play around with. Now, like I said, you cannot stack... Oh, you can stack them. So you can stack them, but only if you have a specific, like a different, uh, a different enchant on there. So if we take Flak Burst now, we can give that another 500 weapon charge. 
And is this literally just like a flat gun? Uh, kind of. That's really cool. Look at that. <laughs> That's so nifty. Okay. Fragmenting sphere that does 59 points of bleed damage per second for two seconds. So if I just hit you... Yeah, that's... That'll do it. That'll really do it. Also, I just killed my own automaton. But let's see, what other stuff do we have within the staff? Because I'm, I'm really enthralled with this staff. So repair, I imagine... Repairs a dwarven automaton 118 points per second and boosts both armor and rating... Armor rating and magic assistance. Or resistance, rather. So yeah, if I had that dwarven spear, uh, sphere here as well, I could go ahead and repair him. Which is a nice thing to have, especially if you plan on taking these things into battle. Because they tend to be pretty pretty squishy. But then we have ourselves the oppression beam, or the suppression beam. And it doesn't have a description in the weapon thing. But okay, that looks kind of cool. It looks like a lightsaber, kind of. Does it do any damage? It doesn't look like it does any damage. Okay, but now she's pissed at me, so let's go ahead and reload that save. So then we've got this one, it's called like Bathon Anoon or something like that. Mining beam that does 118 points of fire damage at close range. Targets on fire take extra damage. Oh, so it is a straight up fire beam. Wow, that thing melts people. Are you kidding me? Holy Jesus. That's amazing. So that's that one. And then finally, we can take a look at the energy sphere. So the Energy Sphere is the last one that we can take a look at here. Charged Sphere that emits electrical arcs at nearby targets for 296 shock damage to health and magicka. Okay. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> Just a little bit of a shocker. And zap. That's so cool. Oh my god, I love that so much. Wow, it's making the Mammoth Skull up there, like, jiggle around. So that's Manufacture. Manufacture comes with a lot of fun things to play with. But then let's take a look at some of the other ones. We've got the Dwarven Thresher right here. And you'll understand why I asked where this fits in the lore, because I have never in my life seen this thing. Where does this thing live? It's a bit weird looking, honestly. But I believe it's a smaller version of the Dwarven Ballista. It's just a really cool looking crab bot. But then, what was the other one that I went ahead and equipped? The Grounding Mine. Mine that casts etheric beams that drain 80 points of magicka and stamina. So now, anything inside of there. This is perfect for those pesky mages. That's pretty cool. Uh-oh. Here we go. Let's watch the Thresher fight. It shoots little ballista bolts, I think. And it's kind of adorable, honestly. <laughs> it's just shooting her from afar. Holy crap, those do a lot of damage. So yes, those absolutely do. Oh crap. It's, it's, it's working on me too. You can see the stamina dropping. Yeah, and the Magicka. Oh god, they're all fighting each other. It's mayhem! So that was the Grounding Mine and the Dwarven Thresher. But now with the last couple ones, we've got the Piston Mine and the Power Stroke. So this one does the same one as the one that we looked at before, the Etheric Warp. But instead of pushing them to the nearest mine, this one... Enchants your power attacks for 60 seconds to do magic damage, and you launch targets with a pneumatic blast. I really want to see what that one looks like. But let's take a look at what the Piston Mine is, because like I said, it's basically Skyrim's version of the Bouncing Betty. And oh my god, that does so much damage, it's not even funny. <laughs> now, if only you could put multiples of those down, that would be OP as hell. Could you imagine going up against a dragon with some of these spells? That's insane. But we're going to probably need God Mode on for this next one, because it's going to take, I think, 472? That one costs zero. Uh, wait, which one was the one that cost... I think it was Power Stroke, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try it this time without the... Uh, the giant bouncing Betty mine. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You could just straight up send people flying. That makes me so happy. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's amazing. Oh my god. And then finally, we do have Scald. And it does exactly that. It shoots steam. And it makes them a very flamey boy. 
And I can kind of dig it. <laughs> so, I suppose if you've ever wanted to roleplay as a Dwarven Centurion, this is absolutely the best way to do it. Now, in order to find the, uh, the three master spells, uh, the ones that I said that I, I actually really couldn't even find to save my life, you just need to start casting the spells, and it will bring up a quest called Dwarven Research. There may be more lost technology buried within the Dwarven ruins of Kagrenzel, Mijin Shaleft, and Nishun that thing. So you can go and try and find them. Um, for some reason, whenever I went to the one in Markarth, there was something for me to take a look at. But anytime I went to that one and or this one, there was no extra, there were no extra things to, uh, to find. So like I said in the beginning of the showcase, if you do end up finding it, do please let me know down there in the comment section and I'll go ahead and pin your comment. That way people in the future can see exactly what that is. So what are you guys thinking for this mod? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Would you use this? And also, keep in mind, all of this is without any points into these perks. So all of them can be increased incredibly high with all of the uh, the augmented shocks and disintegrate and making spells cheaper, not to mention with alteration and conjuration, being able to summon two of those things at once. There's a lot that you can really do with this mod, and not to mention it focuses on the Dwemer. And I think that's a really cool thing, because we often forget a lot about the dwarves and everything like that. So, let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comment section. I think I would probably use this if I was going for a very heavy magic playthrough. And I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this. So, until next time, thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you in the next showcase.